You're in the trenches again with Dave Lappin, brought to you by First Star Logistics, and we're visiting with Bengals defensive coordinator, Lou Anarumo. What a run the Bengals defense had last year in the playoffs. Unbelievable. Plus seven in the turnover department. Six interceptions the first two playoff games. Three interceptions each week. Man, you have three picks in a playoff game? The chances of winning that playoff game rise exponentially, and they needed every one of them because they were squeakers. Good games, team played well, peaked at the right time of the season. Lou Anarumo is going to tell us all about that on the defensive side of the football. What would Lou Anarumo have done if he didn't get into the coaching profession? Why did Lou Anarumo become a football coach? All this and more coming your way. Welcome once again to In the Trenches with Dave Lappin, brought to you by First Star Logistics, as always, brought to you from our studios, our outstanding studios. And we've got a guest today that has been with us numerous times and has been outstanding, to say the very least, and he's kind enough to join us again. None other than defensive coordinator Lou Anarumo. And coach, you guys just finished your OTAs, and uh, the guys are going to be away for a good month, month and a half. What was your message? What was your message message to them? Uh, Cause you're not going to be back together until the end of July. Yeah. Um, so again, as always, thanks for having me. Uh, always a pleasure to be with you guys, but uh, Thank you. so, you know, it's, it's, it's a time where, you know, you're, you're more, you're educating all of them, but you're really trying to help the young guys in particular. And, you know, this isn't the time of the year where, you know, you're taking a vacation to Cancun or wherever to Vegas for, for a week and, you know, doing your thing. Uh, this is the time to get ready for the season. Uh, the time to enjoy yourself was kind of right after the season. Uh, mm-hmm. That's vacation time. This is prepare for the season time. So, um, you know, they'll take a little bit, maybe a few days to kind of get their heads right again. And then it's all about getting ready for, uh, you know, the end of July when we report. So with that said, your young guys, you, you've got uh, guys that you drafted in the on the back end of things. Uh, you've got some younger defensive linemen that that missed a good part of last year because of injury. How are they assimilating and in, in understanding what you're trying to install? The installation process go pretty well. Did they take it from the yeah. grease board to the field pretty well? I, yeah, I think so. I think uh, all those guys have done uh, pretty well. Uh, you know, we're, we're still – you know, Joseph uh, still rehabbing some, and, and but was able to be out there, which is great. And uh, Wired Hubert, who didn't, uh, you know, had the injury last camp. So, um, you know, some guys that, uh, you know, weren't able to do too much. But at the end of the day, there's some other guys we finally got to see move around. At the end of the day, um, you know, I never like to get too high, too low this time of the year on a player, especially a young player. Um, we got to get in there and play games and tackle people and cover people and get off blocks. And then, then you'll kind of know you'll have a better feel for what you have. So coach, you've had a lot of time to, to uh, look at and digest what you accomplished in 2021. And it was a lot. I mean, it was outstanding, tremendous performance and uh, all the congratulations in the world. What did you do best last year defensively in your estimation? Well, I think, um, I think we were fairly consistent. Um, you know, throughout the year, you know, you take the uh, uh, the Jet game out, the first Cleveland game out, you know, that those were not good performances. But, you know, we played, including preseason, where we played 24 games. <laughs> so um, I thought we played, you know, consistent for most of the time, which was great. I think that once we got to the second half of the year, we really settled in and we tackled – we finished in the top 10 in the league in tackling. And then we were unbelievable in the playoffs uh, from a turnover standpoint. And it really started the second half of the season. Um, you know, we were plus seven in the playoffs. And, uh, you know, you're going to win a lot of games just doing that type of stuff. So we got to pick up where we left off with that in particular, forcing takeaways. And, um, you know, that'll 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 give the ball back to Joe and, and the weapons that we have. And uh, that's – one more possession for them is a, is a chance for another touchdown. So, And then on the flip side of it, w- was there an area that 
um, you uh, we got to maybe pick it up a notch here. Any kind of situational area where we're talking mm-hmm. third down, short yardage, goal line, red zone, uh, mm-hmm. anything that uh, that was problematic in your eyes? Or were you pretty good in across the board? Yeah, you know, I, I'd still like to see us do a better job overall in pass defense. I don't want to see any big big plays. You know, we can definitely do better in that category uh, for sure. You know, I think we finished fourth or fifth in the in the league and in run defense, which is terrific. Um, so, you know, get the pass game a little ratcheted down some and then, um, you know, uh, improve our third down defense as well. So I know you've, uh, we, we talked before and, and you said like 70% of your snaps were nickel snaps, you know, m- minimum of five defensive backs on the football field. Do you expect that trend to continue? Do you think the NFL will cycle uh, in a different direction at all, or what's what's your what's your premonition there? I, I just think that um, it, it'll stay for right now. My my gut tells me it's not going to change anytime soon. With yeah. uh, you know, because they want to get more wideouts on the field, so that means we have to put more DBs on the field, and um, you know, even some of these elite tight ends that you have to play, you know, you're you're probably in more DB um, oriented schemes anyway uh because you know they're bad matchups for linebackers those tight ends some of them so you know that's the way the league's going you know um and i I don't see it changing anytime soon trey flowers did an outstanding job for you in that area last year that was one of his roles is defending those tight ends and you drafted some young defensive backs that seemed to have potential to do the same type of thing for you didn't you i think so you know uh, um i think that uh you know, again, we'll, we'll see on the young guys, but, uh, boy, Trey, Trey Flowers had a great spring. I was very, very pleased with, uh, how he, he left as of yesterday, um, kind of picked up where he left off in the, in the job that he had, but now it's not, not really new to him. You know, it was new to him when we got him. Um, he was used to playing outside a corner. Uh, I think he's improved out there as well. So, uh, we, we feel good about Trey. So the the rookie class, uh, five five picks on the defensive side of the football. The three defensive backs we talked about, a couple of defensive linemen. Did they progress to your satisfaction? Did the rookies progress uh, during the OTAs? Yeah, I think again we get a good a good uh, a better gauge when we get pads on and, yeah. and do all that stuff. But I think what you can see is their development in the classroom, their development in you know how we do things day in and day out, and you know, becoming, uh, learning how to become pros. And we've got a bunch of great players in our locker room to kind of show them how to do that. Now we've talked about uh, this before. We mentioned a couple of these guys. I, I know that uh, year one to year two is when gigantic stride can be made. It's like, you don't know what you don't know. And then you start to realize I, I'm starting to get it. You know, I'm, I'm starting to figure things out a little bit. Joseph Asai, Wyatt Hubert, um, Cam Sample, Tyler Shelvin, these type of guys, uh, What's your expectation there? Does it look like they're advancing in your eyes? Well, again, I think with, with Joseph and Wyatt, really it's still their rookie year. They, they didn't yeah. do anything on the field for us. So right. uh, whereas opposed Cam played meaningful, meaningful snaps for us last year. So, True. you know, Tyler got in more towards the end of the year. Um, he was in there. He was in there on that, uh, you know, final stop against uh, Kansas City where, where we held him to a field goal. He, he had a big tackle. Uh, on one of those runs down there that got it to third down. So, um, you know, he had some experience, but but not a ton. So I think all three of those other guys, it, it's almost like it's their rookie year all over again, just from a, a playing time standpoint. It, it is the era of positionless players, you know, the versatility and uh, all, everything that they can, uh, they can give you from being able to, you know, put the hand on the ground, uh, two point stand, uh, two point stance, drop back into coverage. You know, if, if, if it's in the front seven in the secondary, uh, safety slot corner, uh, slot corner, outside corner, all, all these, all these different, uh, positions that, that guys can play when you're game planning, do you just game plan against, uh, your, the opponent offense that you're working against, or do you factor in, the Bengals are going against this defense could be tough sledding in these areas that might impact me a little bit. Is that, is that too much or is that something that is thought about as your game planning? No, I think it's a good question. I think you kind of look at both factors and, you know, kind of decide, you know, you know, each week is so different. Um, 
you know, you can go from playing the Ravens one week, uh, you know, where they're going to run the ball more um, to, you know, you're playing um, the unknowns of the Steelers, the first game, you know, with, with the new quarterback and how that's going to look, uh, you know, to where you, you know, playing a team like the Chiefs that spread you out, or the Bills that spread you out. So, um, you know, each week is different, but we're always looking at all those factors that you mentioned. So uh, it's a good point by you. Yeah, it's just if if uh, if, the, if the Bengals are offensively, man, we're gonna have a tough time running the football. Uh, you know, we're gonna be throwing the football. We, we may be putting our defense in, in in some tough situations. Do you even incorporate any of that into into when you're when you're scheming your game plan at all, or do you yeah. have plenty plenty to deal with otherwise? No, well, no, it's a good. Yeah, again, good question, uh, good point. We we have. Uh, game management meetings uh, every week, obviously, uh, with Zach and our analytic uh, person, Sam, and the coordinators and kind of talk through what it's going to take to win the game. And, uh, hey, this is going to be – hey, they're really, really good on defense. This is going to be a knockdown drag out. Or, hey, we feel good about putting some points up this week. And, you know, just different things that you run by. And, and you kind of have an idea or – I don't know that it would totally change your game plan, but it certainly may change some of my calls and how the flow of the game is going um, to where you might not, might not have to take a risk uh, on defense to try to force something to happen. Um, you know, whereas, hey, you know, we can be a little safer here. You know, we feel good about we're going to be able to score on these guys. So, you know, we'll see. Each Again, it's, uh, it's something that you just play by ear each week. You know, it, you, you mentioned the playoffs, how dynamic you were. I mean – Three interceptions in your first two playoff games in each game. Un- unbelievable. Six picks in a in two important games that ultimately, I mean, really determine the outcome, um, you know, of the football game. At yeah. what point during the regular season, or was there a point where you said, "Wow, you know what? We might have something special here," or did, did it just kind of evolve? I mean, what was the what was the uh, scenario there, Coach, last year? You know, I, I don't know. I, I just always felt good about the group we had uh, come, sitting here. I remember talking to you this time last year and saying, I feel good about this group and, you yeah. know, going on our third year and the, the guys we added. And, you know, I had a good feeling all along. And I, I, I feel that way today, you know, sitting here. And, um, you know, and I just think, you know, we're, we're doing the same drills we, we've done in terms of creating takeaways and, you know, you just, it's one of those things where you just keep, you know, the old adage of pounding the rock, pounding the rock, and eventually it breaks. Well, that's kind of what happened with the turnovers last year. Yeah, it was, it was incredible. I mean, it, it really was impressive. Iron sharpens iron, as the old saying goes. And yeah. uh, down the stretch of the OTAs, you did some seven on seven work and you had some of your young defensive backs working against a, a, a trio of wideouts is as good as it gets in the National Football League, although T. Higgins obviously couldn't participate with that shoulder issue that he's got. But, you know, Jamar Chase, Tyler Boyd and company, and that's, that's um, you know, it's going to put a little test on some of the young guys. How did they respond? No, yeah, for sure. Our guys are great to, to practice against. Yeah, I thought everybody did, you know, they did a good job. And, and when they did make errors, you know, they were easily corrected. And, uh, you know, I think it's uh, – it's going to be, again, we put them out there for those uh, six practices that we had, and uh, they competed and, you know, did things the right way. I, I just think it's a good group overall and uh, excited to uh, get this little break here, um, you know, kind of recharge, and then, you know, once we get back, kind of really see what we got, you know, once we start playing those preseason games. The thing is, this football team as a whole – uh, defensively, you know, and offensively, it's young. I mean, it, it, everybody is in the early stages of a, of a great professional career or certainly in the prime, you know, they're not on the back nine, they're not on the back end of it. Yeah. I mean, the fact that uh, that they're playing at the level that they're playing at, uh, that the age that a lot of these guys are performing at, how exciting is that for you and your staff? Well, it's huge. I, I mean, I just, uh, the, you know, and, and, some of that is some of these guys were forced to play early, which you go through some of the growing pains of that. Right. Um, you know, but uh, our level of uh, just just our two linebackers, you know, Jermaine and Logan, and and the the way they communicate out on the field, the calls that they make, and the adjustments they make, even in the walkthroughs and practices, the minimal teamwork that we had here in, in the spring, 
you know, they they picked up where they left off really in the Super Bowl in terms of making some calls that we had in that late in the season. And they're asking me, hey, coach, you know, you want to do this here? And I was like, okay, that's a 400 level course right there. And, and they're, they're jumped right in as opposed to, all right, this is what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to line up in the A gap and drop to the curl or, or whatever, you know, right. we're, we're so we're, we're so light years beyond that. It's not even funny. That's that's great. We were talking to Coach Callahan here recently uh, about when Joe Burrow comes off the field, the information that that he's talking about is unbelievable. You know, Brian says, "Man, it's it's what we're seeing from up top in the crow's nest area." You know, and, yeah. and Joe sees it so well. And you know, is it the same with some of the guys that you rely on to when they come off the football field? They're giving you information, and, and you're like, "Wow, that's that's spot on." Now we we got we got something special here. Well, I learned early on in coaching and uh, kind of Coach Parcells kind of put it in my head a long time ago. I heard him say something. It's like they're out there playing. Uh, You may think you see something. um, And, you know, but if if a player that tells you something that you trust, there's a big thing difference there. If it's somebody that you don't trust, then maybe you let it go in one year and out the other. But if it's a player that you know that you trust is, is is all in on what you're trying to accomplish, and he sees something and has a suggestion, you probably should listen. Um, and uh, I've always prided myself on that. And, um, you know, we got a bunch of those guys, so it's great. You mentioned uh, Coach Parcells. Uh, that's that's a, obviously a, a legendary name and a legendary figure right there. When did you realize, Coach, that you wanted to coach? I mean, what was it something you always wanted to do, even when you were playing? Were you thinking about yeah. coaching, or how, how did that evolve? Yeah, it really did. I, I, I went to uh, went to Wagner College here on Staten Island and uh, was, um, geez, I was in my freshman year at camp and kind of tore up my shoulder pretty good. And, and uh, so I was kind of done early in my college career. Um, really can't even call it a career. Um, it was about two weeks. But anyway, um, wow. and I went right back to my high school. Um, and you know, I was kind of lost a little bit, wasn't sure if football was over and, uh, but I started coaching right away and that was it. I was done as a 20, 20 year old or whatever, 21 year old. Caught the bug big time, huh? Yeah. Yeah. So if you hadn't gotten into coaching, what profession do you think you might've gotten into? I don't know. So, so many of my friends are, uh, having grown up here, uh, are wall street guys, you know, I, I would maybe something like that. Um, I don't know. That's a good question. I'm glad. I'm, I'm just glad everything went the way it did. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's a, there's no question about it. I mean, when you, when you did get into st- decide, okay, coaching, that's, that's where I want to, that's what I want to do. That's where I want to be. Did you have aspirations to be a coach in the national football league? Were you thinking yeah. along those lines right away? Yeah, I was fortunate. Um, I was like I said, I knocked around in high school at my old high school for a while, and then I was able to go to Syracuse as a graduate assistant. And um, yes, sir, that was through my high school coach, who was good friends with Coach Dick McPherson at the time. Uh-huh. And a job became available, and you know I didn't know anything. You know you don't know what you don't know at that age. Yeah. And I want to say on that staff there at Syracuse I learned so much just how to be a it was unbelievable experience but you know Mac uh he after my first year went to be the New England he the Patriots hired him as the head coach Mm -hmm. um so he left and then Paul Pasqualoni became the head coach at Syracuse so uh, I got to work for Mac for a year and then coach P for a year and I still talk to coach Pasqualoni all the time um but on that staff I want to say out of the uh, you know, back then there was probably 10 full-time coaches. If I recall, I would say seven or eight of them were NFL coaches. So you're always, or became NFL coaches. And, and, you know, that's all those guys talked about was, Hey, we got to do a great job here. And they would always visit other teams. So I really got the bug early from, from them and learning how to do it. And that's kind of what I did throughout my college careers. I was, you know, always in the spring going to visit an NFL team um, and just trying to, trying to, make friends and, and, uh, you know, gain knowledge. And, and that's how, that's how I did it. So if you had to pick a coach that probably had the biggest influence on your career, would it be coach Mack? 
I, I mean, he's certainly one of the guys, um, yeah. you know, just so young and so influential. And I just remember sitting in the back of the room as a young GA and, and being kind of in awe of his uh, command of the room as a coach and then the command that he had of the players, uh, knowing when to press the button and when not. I mean, he was he was something. It was a great human. Uh, so, sure, Mac, had a, Mac was one of the people that had a great, great uh, impact for sure. And, and the coaching fraternity is about as strong a fraternity as a strong a fraternity that I can think exists really. Yeah. And it, it uh, when something good happens like that, you, you're mentored by somebody, you guys in turn do it to others. And what, what coach that you've mentored, are you the most proud of at this stage of their career? Well, I mean, few, huh? <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's a few guys for sure. I, I gotta be honest, uh, you know, Ricardo Allen, who I recruited at Purdue and, and sure. came, you know, had a great NFL career, obviously played for us last year. I mean, he's coaching for the Dolphins right now. And, and, yeah. I, and I knew he always wanted to. And, and uh, so I couldn't be happier for him. But, uh, you know, there's, there's a few other guys that I've um, that I've coached that are kind of making their way through it. And I, I try to help them every step of the way. So you got a little little uh, little free time, coach, like you say, it's uh, yeah. you, you don't you. you you try to get away from football for a few days, but I'm I'm sure, you know, you're always excellent and knowing and scheming. I mean, you guys going to uh, you're going to go to the Jersey Shore a little bit, Coach? Anything? Down, like that? I will be down the shore uh, July second. <laughs> uh, so uh, for sure, uh, we're always down there for uh, for Fourth of July. We've been doing that when, when, since I was a kid. My kids know, you know, every year we'd go down there for a week. So doing that, hopefully playing a lot of golf, and I uh, got my laptop, so. I'll, There'll be time each day where I'm, I'm checking stuff out, but uh, going to try to relax here for sure. So, do you have any uh, any family members that that you think are aspiring coaches? Well, I have two. Uh, both of my that? son, both of my sons. Um, so my uh, my my middle son, who just graduated Purdue um, in last year, he worked at the University of Miami. Um, after graduating, he worked in their recruiting office as a volunteer, right. um, then was actually offered a full-time job there, uh, this past April. Um, and then a month later or two months later, he, uh, uh, the giants had a, um, a scouting assistance job available and, and he interviewed for that and was, so he got that. So he's working for the giants, uh, which I'm super proud of him of that. And then my middle guy, my youngest is, uh, a sophomore at West Virginia. So, and he's doing the student coaching uh, thing uh, along with going to school. So, uh, you know, it's not, not surprising. That's all they know. <laughs> right. Uh, but it's their passion too, which is great. Yeah. I mean, it's, you that tells me that, that you're done a heck of a job and I'm not surprised because you're a heck of a man, but in, in balancing family and football, Sometimes is there's not enough hours in the day, but you found a way to get it done, Coach, yeah, for your well, for your uh, for your sons yeah. to all want to follow in your footsteps like that. I mean, they they've uh, feel like they've experienced a great life uh, thanks to you. So that that's a big credit to you. Well, I appreciate that, but uh, let's let's call let's call uh, let's call it what it is. My wife, great mother, is, yeah. is the one that did all of this. So God bless Fran. A she puts up with me and. B, she's raised our kids, um, you know, because as you said, and I say that I say this to the players uh, when we get back in training camp, say, listen, we're going to be with each other more than we're going to be with our own families over the next six months. So sure. that's just the way it is. But uh, no, Fran has uh, been unbelievable for sure. Tell you behind every successful coach, there's a tremendous wife and mother. There's absolutely no exception to that rule. Unbelievable. No, no not at all. The, the game puts demands on everybody. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's for sure. sure. No, no doubt. So, Coach, I noticed even even in OTAs, for the first time in, in history, Pittsburgh comes to Cincinnati and, and the Bengals open a season up playing the Pittsburgh Steelers. And I noticed, you know, um, when the offense was doing some things, defense had pullovers with Steeler numbers on and positions. And so the emphasis on getting ready for the Pittsburgh Steelers – has already started, hasn't it? Well, you're we always trying to, you know, you don't want to make it uh, too early, but you certainly, uh, you know, have an idea of what some of the things that, 
you know, they've done, they're a common opponent. We know them. They'll have some different stuff, just like we do. Every, every first game has uh, new things. Um, they'll have a new quarterback. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll expect some different things from them. Uh, defensively, um, you know, Zach, you know, knows what, what, uh, you know, I'm sure they'll have some new stuff, but you know, they're, they're still at the core, you know, what they're going to do. And, uh, so it's always good to get a head start. And I can imagine there's many hours that coach Lou Anderun was in that football lab and you've, you've got your foundational stuff. You've got your stuff, you know, is, is going to yeah. be, be things that you're, that you're going to build off of, but are you now in the process of, uh, what would this tweak look like? What would that tweak look like? And let's take it out on the field and see, ah, and, yeah, I like that. Don't like that. Are you going through all that process now? I mean, we're going to see some different things out of the Bengals defense as always. Yeah. Well, we, we did some of that in the spring, you know, we yep. kind of, uh, that's the time to kind of test this out, test that out. Hey, we like this. We don't like this so much. We still have training camp to a degree to do some of that, but you like to get that out of the way now. We feel like we, we have done that. There may, there's, there'll certainly be some things that, uh, you know, that we're going to do different this year. But, you know, at the end of the day, you know, we are who we are. And, um, you know, we trust in the things that, you know, that we've done and, and uh, the guys believe in it. So that'll be the core of what we do. You know, it's interesting, Coach. I talk, you know, to, to people as, as much as I can down at the practice facilities and in preparation. And, and uh, you'd expect offensive coaches to, to – um, be praiseworthy of Joe Burrow, but all of your coaches, you know, defensive coaches, special teams coach, everybody says, man, uh, the Joe Burrow, man, this guy, he's, he's special. He's unique. This dude, is. when you have a guy like that, it has a huge trickle down on every phase of your football team, doesn't it? Oh, a hundred percent. You know, just the whole locker room feels it. Uh, when you have a leader like that, you have a player of his caliber and a guy that just refuses to lose. And, uh, you know, wants the best out of everybody, demands the best out of everybody. And then you have a whole locker room of guys that are like that. Um, you know, it's a, it's a special thing. So, you know, so happy we have Joe. And finally, Coach, appreciate your time as always. No You've been very generous with it. Uh, I, the, the teams that I played with that were very successful had multiple leaders, you know, not just like a Joe Burrow. Had had like a Kenny Anderson or Joe Burrow, a, a numerous size and Joe Burrow type leader. But every position group had at least one, maybe more than one leader, you know, that guys respected, looked up to, um, you know, took direction from, all that sort of thing. And that's what this football team has, in my opinion. I look around and I'm like, I can pick a bunch of guys, you know, from both sides of the football, you know, multiple guys at multiple positions that, I, that I'd vote for captain. You know, it's like, <laughs> that's when you're cooking, right? Yeah, you're 100% right. And I think – you could go through each position, as you mentioned, and say, hey, you know, Vaughn Bell, what a heck of a leader. And, and uh, Logan Wilson, Jermaine Pratt, what what a help, you know, Sam Hubbard and Trey Hendrickson, and, yep. you know, on our side, Cheeto in the, on the, in, with the corners, Mike Hilton. You know, you got multiple guys at each level, uh, same thing on offense, um, you know, so. Uh, and, and, again, it's – those guys are always good to have, um, obviously. Uh, but when things are going good – it's okay. It's you need them the most is when you're going to hit that little skid that every team does. Hopefully it's not very long, but you know, it's the NFL and, and it's a tough league as we all know. But when you hit a, a week or two of some challenging times, it's those guys that along with the coaches that kind of pull you out of, uh, yeah. pull you out of it. And don't let you get too low or too high. And that's, that's always the goal. No question about it. Coach, you, uh, you provided a lot of uh, a lot of excitement, a lot of thrills for everybody associated with the Cincinnati Bengals last season. It was a, a heck of a year, a glorious year. I know everybody wants to run it back. Never going to be easy in the AFC. AFC's a, a load, but time to have a little bit of a uh, little bit of time to enjoy your family and maybe uh, enjoy your time on the shore, as as uh, as I know you will. Yes. It's well earned and well deserved, sir. I appreciate it, Lap, and uh, have, a, have a good vacay yourself, and I'll see you when we get back. That's right. We'll see you at, uh, see you at training camp at the end of July, sir. Sounds good. See you guys. Dave Lapham here, and every day I am grateful for my experience to have played professional football. As a player, I realize self-motivation, 
leadership, and appreciating your teammates are key. At First Star Logistics, you can use those same attributes to create the life you want for you and your family. Build your future by working hard like I did. You'll see results both on and off the field. Call First Star Logistics today and be part of our winning team.